This is G.I. Joe, The Rise of Cobra, City Strike, Snake Eyes, and the Reactive Impact Armor, Heavy Duty. Um, now, uh, well, Heavy Duty is part of, uh, the Reactive Impact Armor is part of Wave 1, while uh, Snake Eyes is the, is part of Wave 5, uh, of, of the Rise of Cobra figures. Now, contrastingly, Heavy Duty, uh, among the figures of Wave 1, uh, maybe 2 and 3, but the first few waves, this is guy is the easiest to find. Uh, he's been left on the shelf uh, in a lot of stores, and I've seen Heavy Duty. He's not a very popular f uh, character, but I reckon he will soon be very popular uh, once the, the G.I. Joe uh, shark submarine is released because uh, uh, I'm sure a lot of collectors will want to pair him up with a, with a uh, vehicle, the shark submarine. Okay, um, on the other hand, this uh, City Strike Snake Eyes, this is I think the fourth version of Snake Eyes, one, two, three, four, fifth if you include the uh, Target exclusive uh, Arashikage motorcycle Snake Eyes, so he's either the fourth, fifth. He is by far the most difficult, most elusive figure uh, to find, at, well, at least in Wave 5 here in Manila. In your part of the world, you could have a, loads of snake eyes, I'm sure, but here in Manila, this guy, very, very hard to find, uh, especially that Wave 5 had just come out. And he's normally the first to go. As soon as new Wave 5 figures are displayed on the shelf, he is the first to go. It doesn't stay long. Uh, not even an R, I think, and uh, rightly so. Uh, okay, let's talk about let's talk about Heavy Duty first. Now, Heavy Duty is the e, well, he's like the brawn of Team Alpha. Uh, he comes with uh, a bunch of other weapons, uh, and uh, here's his box. Nice, um, very nice artwork. He comes with a bazooka, with a Gatling gun. And with a backpack that says HD for heavy duty, he also has the uh, some uh, a belt of bullets right here. Uh, I, don't, I don't know. I'm not a big fan of these big weapons that, uh, especially when you put the figures on display, they just topple over. So I'll keep it in the box. But uh, the figure in itself is very nice. Um, very, uh, very close to how the character actually looked like in the movie. I like the fact he has his grenade launcher with him. It's a nice touch they've added. Um, detail on him, especially the head sculpt, is great. The reactive impact armor is one of the cleanest I've seen, uh, contrasting it with uh, Ripcord or with Duke, so it's pretty awesome. Uh, the only comment I have with this figure is that he's a little bit uh, disproportioned. He has such a huge torso while he has such a, a little bit, just a few cent just a few millimeters short uh, legs uh, for the torso but that's okay easily forgivable he's very poseable he has all the articulation of a regular GI Joe oh and he has a side uh, sidearm that is that is removable I think yes it is uh, he's got a pistol nice you can actually hold it in either hand doesn't matter but uh, it's nice that they've they really added that to him. Doesn't really have a specific weapon of choice during the movie. I don't remember him choosing any kind of weapon, but this one I think suits him. Grenade launcher. So very nice, heavy duty. If you had the G1 heavy duty, you might remember that he might look something like this. Uh, he looked fairly armed with all these. Uh, uh, what rockets and, and guns on him. It was very interesting during his time, but big contrast is how he looked today. He, this guy was more of a uh, very laid-back character while he was more serious. So, huh. Very nice. Um, I like this because the whole assembly fits on his backpack and he looked, reminded me of the Centurions. This old cartoon with the man combined his machinery okay let's go to the more popular character 
uh, the snake eye, the city strike snake eyes, or the, as some people affectionately call him, the, the uh, resolute snake eyes. Very nice indeed. Here is the box. I mean, the box art alone uh, is enough to make you want to get this figure. Uh, just an, a fantastic artwork they, they, they've put on this figure. He, he retained some of the... Um, wait, let me, just, let me just see if I can get that right. Um, he has the, the grappling, hook, uh, grappling hook backpack that, that, that was uh, included in the Arctic Assault Snake Eyes. He has some ice shoes. Uh, or spiked shoes, spiked um, yeah, footwear, which I don't really understand why he would need it. Maybe for scaling buildings in the city. Uh, he's got a pistol, which he used in the movie, and a knife. Uh, both these weapons do not fit anywhere in his, uh, in the character, in the figure, unless you can just find a way to squeeze it in his web belt. But uh, other than that, they're, they're going to stay in the packaging for me. Okay, he also comes with a scabbard, uh, which attaches to the back of his belt. Uh, it, it's it's a see-through scabbard. Hasbro decided to save on plastic. You can you can see the sword slide in to the scabbard. He's got his Arashikage katana, see, as always, Arashikage tattoo right there. He's got a small pouch backpack which you can fit on his back, um, and he's got a rifle. Uh, which comes uh, attached to his hand when inside in packaging, and he has a teeny tiny rifle that fits on his uh, that that's located on his other hand in packaging. I think this one is a little bit out of scale for the figure. I mean, he was so small. This is probably the most annoying bit about this figure. Everything else is great about it, but this is very annoying because it easily gets lost. It looks like a toy gun in his scale, or I could be wrong, you know, you could just put in the comments what it is, but it could just be like a small pistol that, that they've added stock into, but I'm not a big fan of this gun. Probably just going to leave it in the packaging. He's very, uh, I mean, this, this figure is just amazing. I mean, in pictures, I, I've seen pictures of this guy, and I wasn't really too impressed. I said, hmm, why would anyone want this snake eyes? And then he started flying off the shelves, and I couldn't find him until I finally found him, and I, and I realized, goodness, now I realize why people like this guy. This is a fantastic figure. Even my wife loves him. I mean, what what's what's not to what's not to like about this figure? I mean, the gray scale. Let me just stand him up. He's just being annoying right now. Okay, the gray scale on this figure is just amazing. Um, I think Hasbro did a wonderful job on him, uh, repainting him into the movie version. Okay, let's just stand him up here. Uh, I mean, I mean, he's not my favorite. My favorite is still the Paris Pursuit, but he, he's right there. The the pistol grip on on his right hand is a perfect fit uh, for the Arashikage uh, katana. I mean, it's nice. I mean, it, it's great. It fits at an angle and not just vertically up. Uh, this gun fits very nicely on his uh, on his left hand he's got a a very detailed uh, web belt I think or pistol holder pistol belt and backpack belt it's very nice and I'm glad that they put the sword a little bit lower on his belt instead of the traditionally high up position on his back which is nice uh, I don't have no, I don't have a resolute snake eye, so it'd be impossible for me to compare him with. But you might have one with you, and you, you can just write down in the comment section how similar these figures are. But he is just awesome. I am just glad I picked him up and did not pass him up when I saw him, because I I can I can now understand why people like this figure. So if you see him, even Heavy Judy, I like Heavy Judy. I just I don't understand why people pass him up. But uh, this guy. If you see him in, in, on shelves, I highly recommend him. Perhaps, you know, if you're just going to collect a few J.A. Joes, make this guy one of the Joes uh, or movie Joes that you have in your collection. He's just terrific. So, with that, let's end this review. The Heavy Duty, uh, Reactive Impact Armor, and City Strike Snake Eyes. Thanks for watching.